G'day, welcome back. It's Mr. Buzz here. And again, I'm playing the forest, but this time it is on the PlayStation 4. So I'll be here to give you some differences between the PC version, uh, some tips along the way. I go on through to the ending. Uh, try not to give too many spoilers. So enjoy the series I've put together. I begin here. Uh, this is episode one, I guess. Um, the six part series that I've put together. I'm in the forest. I'm new to the PlayStation version, so I haven't used the controller before, so when I initially started off this playthrough, I just was using it to test what the buttons are, so in future videos I knew you know, what the controls were for the PS4. Um, and as you can see here, the same game. For those of you new to the game, you chop down the forest to build bases and houses, use logs and, and sticks and rocks to build your structures. I'm a veteran from the PC and I like putting videos together and in order to do so you sort of need to know what the buttons are so for different versions of the game I mean you know, and this version is the PlayStation 4 so, in this case I'm using it just to see how to change a custom wall to an automatic placement to a custom placement. So you press the square button, in case uh, you're looking for that. It's the same with the roofs and custom floors, and rock walls, and stick wall, stick fences, sorry. So you press the square button and you can make individual walls of these custom walls and roofs. And get your custom placement a bit better where you want it rather than having a you know generic building you can completely customize it yourself now I love the spear in this game and I'm used to putting it on my hotkey number one this game only has two hotkeys spears are great for hunting deer and boar as well because you can generally take them down in one hit. And if I can jump over this log, get to my deer. So again, at this stage, um, I was still only using this as a, a test. Uh, I built a small platform, and as you can see, here, I'm about to put a little staircase on it using R2 to place and then R2 to end it um, and yeah R1 is for rotating things when they implemented the control on the PC they also allowed you to rotate the item in both directions but on the PlayStation you can only rotate it in a single direction which is the same with the keyboard on the PC Unless you have um, add ons and things. So I've built my platform, I've got my staircase. And I'm just going to put a single custom wall pylon in the corner here. When you put your placement down, if you put it where you want it, it doesn't quite go where you want it. So you have to move it just slightly off and move it towards where you want it and then you can place it and the beauty of these they're only one log and you can still attach a custom roof to them that's pretty good so I was saving the game and some cannibals came along Decided they were interested in my building techniques. And I'm not very good with the controller. I think my sensitivity has to be adjusted. And I do get that. Early days. Early days. But he's a, a demonstration of how poor I am using the controller. 
in combat. So, I tip my hat to all those PlayStation 4 players who maybe haven't played the PC version because using a mouse to turn your camera, I find, well, at this stage, I found it, it was a lot easier. Um, I did eventually adjust the sensitivity in the control and combat became a little bit easier. So, taken down two and the other one ran away. And for beginners of the game, uh, when you do kill a cannibal, you can get a stick. And I have an upgraded stick here and you add a cloth to it. And then you can light the cloth on the stick. And you burn the bodies. Burning the bodies gives you bones. And you combine the bones with cloth to make bone armor. So, after exiting the game, I decided, you know what, maybe it is worth doing a playthrough on the PlayStation. So, using my same save, I decided to re-enter the forest. And these stick trees have grown back, as you can see. And the ones that you've built structures around, they do collapse when you get close to them. So that's nice to know. So, because I'm now deciding that I will actually play through the game, I'm looking at my hotkeys. And because I am limited to two, it sort of cuts down what I have to do. Because normally I would have my meds on a hotkey uh, when I'm playing on the PC. But I don't know if I can do that on the PlayStation version. Um, I have done it here, and early on I, I suggest it's probably a good idea to have meds quickly, you know, accessible, so you can take them when you need them. Uh, I'm also here creating a bow, because it's one of my favourite weapons in the, in the game. I don't have any arrows yet, but there are some campsites around where I can find some, or I can make some out of feathers and sticks. Um, you get feathers from the birds, and you can make uh, birdhouses to get feathers from. And they do work in the PlayStation version. Also, some things I've heard about with the game, some people have had some complications or got some questions about how to do things. And one of them involves the rabbit trap. So I decided to test out the mechanics here. I'm going to use a rabbit trap and I'm going to attempt, once I catch a rabbit, to pick it up out of the trap without killing it. And then I can transfer it into a rabbit cage for breeding purposes. The spears are great, but if you don't have a spear bag, then you kind of have to make a spear every time you miss or lose a spear. The spear bags are uh, fantastic. They added them just recently to the game and you can carry multiple spears. It's awesome. But you need boards for them and they're not where I am at the moment. So I've also got some visitors here watching me build. They're not always aggressive, but they are close to my meat rack and I don't really like that. Cannibals will attack your meat rack, so sometimes you know, be prepared to defend them. Here I'm, I'm trying to communicate with the cannibals. I've seen some videos of people doing the traditional teabagging greeting and the cannibals reciprocating, but these ones don't seem to want to communicate. They just want to hover around my meat rack. I'll try and draw them away, at least that one. I'll collect my sticks. My rabbit trap. 
See now he's caught on my meat rack. I don't like that at all. Then he vanished. I think he went through the tree. As long as he's away from my meat rack, I'm happy. I still don't trust myself in combat with this control system, so as long as they're not attacking me, I'm happy. So, in this playthrough, I'll be learning things, I guess, as I go with uh, the PlayStation version in comparison to the PC version. I don't know how much in the way of changes they've made to the AI and things like that, but I mean, so far it seems kind of the same. These are skinnies, they're called. Sometimes the, the early encounters you have in the forest. And these ones, generally, they will be aggressive because they are hungry and they're dirty. And I find the tribal ones that you come across can be a bit more passive. And then the blue guys are very aggressive, and then later on in the game. I've got a crafted axe at the moment. You craft an axe with the crafting mat. Yeah. I've got another cannibal watching me. I've got my rabbit trap set up. Oh. Now I'm just going to wait for a rabbit. I'll collect a few more sticks here. It's also handy to make a stick bag. It allows you to carry a lot more sticks. The 20 sticks you can carry instead of the, the normal 10 that you begin with. And she is aggressive. And here, if you block at the right time, there we go. It gives you a nice time to hit, a, hit, the, hit them. Doesn't matter if they're male or female, they just want to eat you. They can, if you can time that block, you can actually knock them back and it does damage. I've killed cannibals in the past by knocking them back with the block. You can also burn the cannibals on campfires. So, I'm saving this game here. Got my nice little camp set up. I don't really intend on staying in this location though, because, like I said at the beginning, initially this was just a test area, a test game, but I'm actually deciding now I'm going to move to a place that they call the Fertile Land. Um, I won't build in my usual spot there because, you know, I do want some cannibal interaction, and it's a place where for beginners, it's good to go. Um, now, I'm not a beginner, but this version with the control system, um, you could say I'm a novice. So, I've got my rabbit cage now set up. I've got my garden. I'm just going to wait for a rabbit to come into that trap, and I can start breeding them. Uh, I also need seeds for my garden. So I've got some aloe vera there. And you find herbs and plants as you go. It did rain recently, so I've got you now mud on me. And mud will help you camouflage, apparently. It helps you with your camouflage, your stealth. Um, I think it's only a little bit, but good. it helps wash blood off as well. It's good. And here's some chicory. You use the herbs to make uh, meds and energy. So here is the campsite that I was looking for. Uh, as I spoke about earlier, you can get arrows and electrical tape. And I've got an old pot so I can put water in that. That's handy. I can also use it as a sap collector, which I think I eventually do. I'm collecting arrows from these sort of yellowy orange cases and sometimes they contain flares 
Flares can be good in caves. They, you know, really light up the area. And we get our deer. Always remember, if you don't have a spear bag, or even if you do, you know, pick up your spear before you lose it. And back at base, I've got a full meat rack, almost. I can put my raw meat there, and I can't fit anywhere else. So I can pick up my lizard and put my raw meat there. Now, if I pick up this dry meat, if I was to press the square button, it would put the dry meat back onto the rack. So what I actually need to do is open my inventory, equip the raw meat, and then place it onto the drying rack. And you have to do this with each piece of meat. So there we go. Now we've got a full rack of meat. Now I've got a nice little spot here where I'm going to sleep for the night. And eat, drink, save. And that's my routine. When it gets to the night time, um, you sleep. You wake up and then you eat, you drink, and then you save, and then you're ready to go for the, the next day. Um, just showing you here, I've got my pot and my arrows. So when you get arrows and a bow, you also have to combine them. So that then you, when you pull out your bow, the arrows are equipped. Now I'm also going to put this as my hotkey on the left direction pad. Uh, I would consider that one on the PC. I'm going to make it my number one hotkey. The left on the D-pad is my number one hotkey, which is now my bow. And I think the down I'm going to use mainly for my axe, but I will change it as I go. And here's the sinkhole. It's a major part of the game. And I've just had a new item added to my to-do list, which is actually to find a way into the sinkhole. I think this part of the game is a bit bugged, because every time I run up to the sinkhole, it gives me that in my to-do list, so... I don't know. Bows are excellent for hunting. Now I missed that one, but... Look at that. You can get lizards and rabbits. Very, very nicely. With a bow. Yeah. And it was this stage too, I was looking around and this is a beautiful game. Unfortunately the video I don't think gives it justice. I was recording this on the PlayStation. Um, and I might add to I'm getting used to trying to record on the PlayStation, which um, I'm not a big fan of. So by the end of this series, I do end up recording on my capture card, which is a lot better quality. Um, but this game is still a beautiful game. So whether you own a PC or a PlayStation 4, I recommend it because it's a you know cheap game. It's fun to play. Um, first few times it's scary as hell and the survival element is really well implemented into the game you know, you've got animals to collect and hunt get, use their skins to craft things really good and I'm glad that they released it on the PlayStation um, I did buy this PlayStation 4 to play Spider-Man but yeah, and the forest is such a, a good game, I couldn't resist. So here I'm making stealth armor. You use lizard skins and leaves. And I'm equipping it, and that's an achievement. Which, uh, I hope that's not a spoiler for too many people, but I was surprised when it came up as an achievement. But, um, yeah. So I made the bone armor as well there, with six bones and three cloth, I think it is. And as you can see down on my health meter, they show up as different colours. So the white is bone armour and the green is stealth armour. Um, you also get clothing as you go. 
currently I'm wearing the dress from the plane, but um, if I can find something else that I want to wear, I'll, I'll come across that. It doesn't really matter because I'm only playing single player, so all I can see is my arm, as you can see there. Uh, at this stage of the game too, I also achieved a few achievements. Um, killing that rabbit was one of them. And yeah, putting on the silk armor, like I said. So I was recording on the PlayStation, and it doesn't record when the achievements pop up. Now there's two types of turtles, or tortoise and a turtle. These ones are the land ones. My two arrows actually missed him, so I'm going to pull out a spear, and that is sometimes a lot easier. Hit him in the head, and well, he should have died. So the ones on the coast don't go into their shell, which I think means that they are turtles. And this one goes into his shell, which I think he means. I think it means he is a tortoise. So if he does go into a shell, you just gotta wait, and he'll come out. If you're patient enough, you'll pop his head out. And you can have another go and mess it up. You can wait again, but if you're impatient like me, you can give up. So, like I said, there's lizards and there's rabbits. But I'm going to shoot this guy point blank because I don't give up. So, when you skin the turtles or tortoises, you get a shell, which you can use as a water collector, or a shield, a two-handed shield, or a sled to slide down the grass or snow. It's great. A lot of fun. Um, so this is down near the river. To my left is what they call the Fertile Lands. That's where I'm planning on building. And ahead of me up here, a little way, is a cave and I'm going to go into the cave and there is a katana and a few other items inside um, unfortunately I messed up the button pressing when I tried to record it so it didn't actually record me doing the cave all I got was a screenshot of me exiting the cave so, but this is the cave um, you go in there, avoid the uh, cannibals and mutant that's in there, go down a little passageway, and yeah, you get the katana. It's good for beginners, it's a nice fast weapon, uh, it doesn't do a lot of damage, but because you get a lot of hits in before they're able to hit you, you can sort of still take them down. So after the cave, I headed across to the fertile lands, and it's called this because it's full of herbs. It's got berries of every kind, it's got herbs of every kind. Um, there's the marigold and chicory, there's blueberries, snowberries. And a lot of people have trouble when they come to the coneflower. They don't know where to find that. So if you saw where I, where I was just then, there's two huts down near the, the river and I'm going to run up this hill chasing these animals and I'm going to kill them and you run up this hill and over the top of this little crest see I, I like to call this bit the saddleback mountain the saddleback hill perhaps and it's got a little pond. Now this pond, or I guess yeah, pond, dam, is a nice spot to sometimes, not all the time, but you can find cone flower. So I come up here and 80% of the time there's cone flower. And it's a fantastic place to find raccoons! My first raccoon. 
I always thought they were nocturnal, but here we are in the middle of the day. Catching raccoons. Getting their heads. And this one is going straight onto my hunter's hut. Get more comb flower. More comb flower. I'll leave that one. Sometimes it's good to not take all the herbs because if you do need some you can always return and get the ones that you didn't get in case they don't respawn in time. So down here in the fertile lands I've built a little hunter's hut. So I'm going to use this as a neat little location so that I can build a house further up in the field. Go to utilities and I'm going to go back a couple of pages and find a trophy head. You can place them on a lot of different things. And here we go. My first raccoon head on the PlayStation 4. Fantastic. So, I've got my meat racks over here you know, a fair amount of meat in this area as well, you've got animals you've got deer, the lizards the rabbits the birds always coming and landing on your thing I like to also build a birdhouse and a sap collector in this area after putting the larger meat onto the meat rack you can cook the smaller meat on the fire because you can't put the small meat onto the fire I've just then equipped creepy armor which I got from the katana cave you can see that pink stuff there it shows up as a pink bar on my armor it is the best armor in the game but also the hardest to get I guess you have to kill a mutant and skin it So, that's the end of this episode. I hope you've enjoyed it. There's a little bit of proof there that the birdhouses do work. You can get feathers and sap collector. So, I hope I've showed you a few tips and things in this game and enough to follow along. I hope you enjoyed that video and the series that I'm putting together. If you are, you can subscribe and give the video a like, so I really appreciate it.